A former beauty contestant suffering from a terminal illness came to his rally in Wisconsin to thank him for his support. I received from you a handwritten letter that said to the bravest woman I know. And I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Just an amazing woman. And are you are you doing are you coming along okay? Um, um no, sir. But um, that's okay because. I'm here right now to thank you in person, and that was my biggest dream. He spoke directly to you. How did you feel? Yes, sir. I, really, I don't think words can, can express the way I felt. I was really overcome with emotion. I, I wanted to thank him. I was afraid that, you know, when my day comes and I'm not here anymore, that I was never going to get a chance to thank him in person. And I just felt like through a letter wasn't enough. And so it was... It was emotional, it was overwhelming, and I was so thankful that he took the time to hear my words and then ultimately, you know, leave the stage and come hug me in the audience. And, yeah. and he, he did make a promise that my son would be taken care of, so. Melissa, I'm almost out of time. Thank you. But I want to make the point. Yes, sir. The, the Donald Trump we see in public is tough guy, somewhat harsh. But you right. know him in private, you know him personally. Is he a gentle man in person? Yes. He, he is the kindest man I, I have ever met. I think he has a heart of gold. I, 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 it, I was surprised too when I first met him and developed um, this beautiful relationship. Um, but he is the, the most generous, kind man. And, and he does so many things that he does not talk about. like what he has done for my son. He, he doesn't toot his own horn when it comes to a lot of things. He does these, these beautiful things like he has done for me, these kind gestures, without ever speaking of them. And so I am so thankful that I was able to share that. Donald Jr., 37, Ivanka, 34, Eric, 31, and Tiffany, 22. He's true to himself and he speaks in a way that the average person can understand. I think that's refreshing for everyone. They say their father also taught them to respect the value of a dollar. To say we weren't spoiled would be laughable, but we were spoiled with great education, great experiences, but we weren't the kids showing up to college with you know, a Ferrari. We always had to sort of earn whatever it is that we wanted. He was very available to us. I mean, from when we were six years old, I'd call, he'd be negotiating with the CEO of a major bank or whatever it may be. <laughs> and he would make them wait, he'd take the call from us. Our times together were learning, you know, playing in his office. He would always sneak me down to uh, get a candy bar, you know, in the lobby. A few months ago, we are walking down the street, and my daughter sees a large pothole in the middle of a New York City street. And she looks at me and she goes, Mom, Grandpa would not like that. <laughs> so it's very cute, and she's four. So she's observed him. Definitely and, genetics. Yeah, Definitely for sure. Genetic. What do you dream about most frequently? I have good dreams, just having a good life. Good family, good life. For many, the White House is a step up. I am looking around this room. The White House might be a step down. The White House is the White House. It's just a, a spectacular place. And, you know, it's uh, something that represents something very special. Hello, Grandpa. It's a very different side of Donald Trump. The soft one, <laughs> breaking from the daily grind to greet his seven grandchildren. Look at this, huh? What a troop. What is your father like as a grandfather? Uh, he, he's been great. Seems even the littlest Trumps are already learning from Grandpa. 